As the nation mourns the victims of mass shootings in Tulsa, Uvalde, and Buffalo, President Biden will address the nation tonight and urge Congress to pass common sense gun laws. A bipartisan group of senators continued conversations this week to figure out what, if anything, can gain the required 60 votes to pass. And today, the House Judiciary Committee considered its own slate of proposals. The committee's top Democrat and Republican disagreed sharply over the issue. Too soon? My friends, what the hell are you waiting for? You say that none of the solutions proposed here will stop gun violence in America? Well, there, sadly, I agree. This bill will not alone save every life we will lose to gun violence this year, but it will save some. This bill would not stop the terrible events. It wouldn't harden schools, but it will sure take away the rights of the American people who follow the law. That's what this is all about. Leanne Caldwell is anchor for Washington Post Live and co-author of the Early 202 newsletter. She's been following the debate in Congress and joins me now. It's good to have you here with us. And the House Judiciary Committee, as you well know, they are considering what is really this mega bill. It's eight pieces of legislation wrapped into one. It does everything from raising the age to purchase semi-automatic weapons to, the, to 21. It outlaws high-capacity magazines and bump stocks. It requires background checks for ghost guns, among other things. But nowhere on this list is an assault weapons ban. Mm -hmm. Why not? Well, because an assault weapons ban, my sources tell me, don't have the votes even in a Democratic majority in the House of Representatives. Even in the House? Even in the House, it doesn't have the votes. The bill has 207 co-sponsors. It needs 218 Democrats, most likely, to pass. And there's a, a number of people who aren't signed on to this bill, and I'm told by leadership aides, by rank-and-file aides, that they are struggling to find those additional Democratic votes in order to reach that 218. Speaker Pelosi announced today in a letter to her colleagues that she's going to hold a hearing on an assault weapons ban, but that doesn't mean she's going to bring it up to the floor. And then on a parallel track over in the Senate, you have Chris Murphy, Senator Murphy, who came to Congress representing uh, the Newtown community. He is leading this bipartisan effort, and they are focused on what I'm told is a fairly narrow set of gun reforms. Yeah. Uh, red flag laws, which William just told us about, uh, expanding background checks, adding funding for mental health services, mm -hmm. for school security. Are there 10 votes, are there 10 Republican votes in the Senate, based on your reporting, to get that ultimately to the president's desk? Well, there's a number of Republicans who are involved in these negotiations. So theoretically, if they come to an agreement with someone like Senator Cornyn, who's very close with leadership, Senator Toomey, perhaps, Lindsey Graham is involved in these negotiations, then presumably they would have the 10 votes. I don't think that they would announce an agreement unless they did, but we'll see. But let's be clear, these things that they're talking about are very, you know, they're kind of around the edges. They're not going to address, um, uh, you know, raising the age of assault weapons. It's not a lot of gun restrictions. What it's trying to do is just to put some safeguards around the opportunity to purchase guns with these red flag laws, perhaps just incentivizing states to strengthen their red flag laws. As far as the mental health component is concerned, something that Republicans are really focused on, um, it's not really clear what they're going to do about that. T saying mental health is the problem is one thing. Legislating that is a whole other issue, and mm -hmm. we'll see where they come down. Help us understand Mitch McConnell's role in all of this, the Senate Republican leader. He, early on, encouraged uh, John Cornyn, the Texas Republican, to work with Democrats to find some compromise here. This is the same uh, Republican Party leader who, in the past, has blocked a number of gun reforms to include red flag laws, which even senators like Senator Marco Rubio had supported. Marco Rubio <laughs> introduced two red flag uh, law, pieces of legislation onto the floor and never got a vote under Mitch McConnell's leadership. Is this a change of heart? Help us understand his reasoning here. Well, a lot of Democrats especially are skeptical about what Leader McConnell is saying. Um, some people think that he has put John Cornyn into these negotiations to make sure that there's not a really impactful legislation that or agreement that comes to the floor, something that's very minor that doesn't really do that much. The other thing that you have to think about with Leader McConnell, as you well know, is that 
everything is calculated in what is going to win him back his majority. Mm. The midterm elections are just five months away. And so he reads the polls better than anyone else. He has a lot of inside information. He will do nothing that harms his members who are trying to beat Democrats. And so he is deciding what he, he is making this decision on what he is saying based on what the polling is saying at this moment. Whether that translates into actual legislation that is going to pass, we will see. But over the past couple of days in Kentucky, Leader McConnell has kind of defined what the realms of this is. He said this is not gun restrictions, this is not gun laws, it is mm -hmm. school safety and it is mental health. And that is much different than something like red flag laws, that's different than background checks. Leanne Caldwell, The Washington Post, thanks so much for your insight and analysis. Of course.